Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Oh la la, welcome back to Trials and Tribulations, everybody. Oh, wait, that's not exactly the voice we did, no, was it? that's like, the, that's a half between the voice we gave him and half between, I'm a little butterfly. Oh, hi, Blake, oh yeah. Anyhow, uh, we're continuing Recipe for Turnabout today. We're on part two, The Trial. Oh yeah, we're on trial The Trial begins now. I forgot. With every trial comes tribulations, I guess. I don't know why you don't like the trial parts. These it's are just, like the it's, best. It's boring for me because I don't get to talk much. Unless if I, it's that one Mia trial that I had where I was voicing like three out of four. <laughs> or characters. the second game where you voiced Franziska. Franziska. That's true. That was really fun. I liked those trial periods more. All right. Well, fair enough. January 7th, 9.48 a.m. Just record to Fabio Lobby number one. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. No one saw the other guy, huh? Even though it was obviously the weirdo. But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor! Maggie! Oh. Ah! D Detective Gumshoe! Uh, are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to either uh, ask me their questions, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger! And you! Y yes you better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? Uh -huh. If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest! What?! <laughs> I think he's serious! Hey, detective! You're on our side for once, right? Yup. So, you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, of course! I've got the situation under control. I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, you make sure to point it out, alright? Oh, I'm sure, sure there will be. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? <laughs> I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, Detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. What if the uh, prosecutor was the opposite Phoenix Wright? <laughs> that would be really great. January 7th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Except we could just be, um, that guy's not a prosecutor. <laughs> That's true. Oh, look. Coffee. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Coffee's ready. <laughs> ah, bitter. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright? Um... Why is it not letting me... Tap? That was weird. It was giving me an error, like, sound effect error. every time that happened. Y yes your honor? Ah! W what's wrong? Uh, nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, You was talking to me? <laughs> it was a little, well, intimidating. No, no! That wasn't me. That was the phony phoenix. No, I can- no, I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Um- Our trusty? <laughs> They're just like, oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not like, um, we gotta forget that. We gotta figure out who faked your identity. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough for this trial today. Oh, great. Fine. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. Uh -huh. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. Thanks. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. And I wonder why. As everyone's aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Do you have, like, a theory on that? I mean, I still think the theory might be he's the kid that pointed out Phoenix Wright as the kid, <laughs> as the person who stole the, stole lunch, the lunch money. He's just like, ah! and, like, trying to blame why, him. Why did he care that much? It wasn't even his lunch money that got stolen. I don't know. Maybe he's, like, a f justice for all type person. I don't know. <laughs> like um, a psychopath? <laughs> I don't know. Um, otherwise... <laughs> That's an interesting um, theory, though. Maybe, like, from a previous case, he was involved with somebody who we got convicted or something. Oh, I maybe. Know, could be. As everyone... Or it could be, like, 
Edgeworth's apprentice, and he's like, now listen, you are to hate Phoenix Wright. It's like, I don't even know who this is. No, you are going to... It's like, But Edgeworth kind of likes this. Like, yeah, I mean, but, but he Edgeworth... acts, like, terrible to us in oh, court. Yes, but... he does. <laughs> As everyone's aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. I miss Edgeworth. Therefore, I won't stand for irrelevant testimony during this retrial. Cool. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said. Trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation. Witness, state your name for the court. Huh? Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, the name's Police Department Detective, Occupation Dick Gumshoe. <laughs> Other way around, Detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday. Sir! Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation's tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control. For everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline the court, the base, to, for the court, the basic facts of the case? Sure. Yes, sir. Please do. The victim's name was Glenn Elg. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Incorporated, a local company. Oh, probably not much. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Glenn's autopsy report added to the court Is record. there ever a time that you might have a phony autopsy report where it's like, oh, here's the autopsy report, and it's just, like, completely not? And, like, it's faked or it's something? It's, like, faked. I mean, we kind of already had that in case, too. This is the updated autopsy report. Oh, yeah, report. the updated one. But, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the first ones, actually. Let's take a look-see. Uh, died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Time wait. of death was between 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. I didn't PM. know, wait, potassium cyanide was poisonous? Have you been using that in chemistry or something? No. Have you I been just... eating it on a regular basis? No! <laughs> if Have you I been did, eating I'd it be on dead. a semi regular no. basis? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> no, I just I didn't realize that's what made it up. Oh, yeah. Uh, here are the floor plans at the restaurant. What is, um, was it like he ate it and it's just like, and then like, I, I died. think we're gonna find that okay. out. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. Okay. The poison coffee was brought to him over to him by uh, the um uh by the waitress. The waitress being the accused. Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he okay, took a sip of the coffee. Okay, then it's probably like drugged in coffee, like a lot, like ninety percent poisoning, two percent coffee. Or it's just a really powerful poison. That too could be that. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Him. Mr. Jean, Jean Armstrong, the owner and chef, and a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Trabian beyond floor plans added to okay. the court record. Probably this other witness that was sitting across like, ooh, hot gal, like probably is the one who would know. Because he was paying the most attention to her. So he probably mm. would know if she uh, slipped something. Yeah, but the, the creepy thing is I don't think he was looking at her face. I mean, no. I'm not saying... But that's what I'm saying. He's looking at what she's oh, doing, wait. not his face. What if he's just, like, really into costume design? He's like, wow, this is like a really well-made outfit. I mean, and people are like, wow, that's people, creepy. Wow, that's no! Creepy. I was he's looking like, no! at the uh, <laughs> Come, detective. Funny. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, sir. This is pretty bad. Having to testify against the girl you have a crush on, that's, that can't be a good uh, feeling. Yeah. The incident. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenn Elk, was listening to the radio at the time. <laughs> Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. How do you make it? Like, you is mix it like potassium with cyanide? No, but it's not like, hello, I'd like to buy some cyanide today, please. Like, you have to get this, like, through weird. Black market? Maybe? Yeah, black market know. stuff. So, is it like somebody had it in their, uh -huh. like, pocket and then they were like, wait, allow me to put my uh, signature thing. <laughs> and then just That's like. Suspicious. <laughs> and, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of a motive. That's the best statement some ever. Some kind of a motive. Hmm. 
He's just like, no. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. Um... The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... What? Uh, yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you that wasn't me! <laughs> oh, gosh. The incident. Look at Godot with his double-pierced ear. Oh, yeah. The victim was alone at his table. Okay, well, we already said that there was somebody there. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match with the testimony given by Miss Bird. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. And I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Well, the other... Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. Their two testimonies tie up on that. So either everyone's against Maggie, or they're like, Maggie crazy! <laughs> like, Coach one is of, crazy! Yeah, like, well, because I feel like the owner, unless if he's like, can't say there's another person there, or else I won't be able to have my- <laughs> I'm turning- I can't do this accent. Like, he won't be able to have his lottery ticket. And then the other guy's like, oh, hot babe. Didn't notice. Um, didn't notice. <laughs> I'll just yeah. say there wasn't. <laughs> they both said there was no other guy at the table. Better to say there wasn't than there was if you're not sure, but still. <laughs> no, it's better to say I don't know. I was staring at the waitress, actually. <laughs> no, that's kind of weird, though. Yes, but at least you're not committing perjury, which in real that's life true. is a it's serious huge. crime. Yeah. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I mean, we might as well, so... Uh, no, I should leave it alone. I've got a bad feeling about where this is going. If you've got a bad feeling about this, then maybe you should leave it alone. I once had a bad feeling that I was about to have a bad feeling. It was really bad. Maybe I should move on to another part of his testimony. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. Yeah, that could be. Ha! That argument is as weak as the coffee at Tra Beyond Trite. I have here in my possession a ticket. What? A ticket? He has the fifty million dollars <laughs> thing, Look, or not fifty million, half a million. Yeah, half a million. Half a million. Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to guilty bill. Population the defendant. Okay, let's see. This is a photograph taken from the entrance uh, near the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef, moments after the poisoning took place, correct- Oh, whoops, wrong voice. <laughs> this, this, is this is the scene as witnessed by the chef, moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime. No, he could totally be hiding. How, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked a second person at this table? <laughs> Maybe he was scooted really close to the wall. <laughs> he could be. It was two seats by two seats. Mm -hmm. So it's that true. could totally be. Not that there's ever any, like, more than one or two people in Trabion at a time. <laughs> yeah, because let's be fair. It's food sucks. Which is a big problem if you're a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. It certainly seems to show that the victim's table is clearly uh, visible. Extremely clearly, as a matter of fact. Extremely uh, actually, clearly. Actually, to be fair, Taco Bell's food sucks, but people like that. But Taco Bell is like the, well, you don't have good Mexican food, so we'll give you, like, half okay Mexican food, and it's It's not cheap. even Mexican. Food. It's cheap. That's why people like it. Also, we live McDonald's in a, is cheap. We live well, in an area like that, that people too. don't have real Mexican food. Yeah, so they're like I'm, Taco Bell's I hate that because I adore good Mexican food. Oh my gosh. But I hate bad Mexican I food. I love good Mexican food. Crime photo added to the court record. That's why most of the stuff we make at home is Mexican food. Oh yeah, that's why. Okay, I want to check, take a look at the plants real quick before we keep the going. floor plants. The floor plants because. Ooh la la, so... Here's the kitchen. The X is where Glen Elg was sitting. We don't know where the other dude was sitting. Right. But if he's not sitting at this table right here, then that means it could absolutely... If he was sitting lower left table, lower left chair, he could be able to see them. He wouldn't be able to see the other dude. Yeah, he would. We'd have like a diagonal. Well, no. if he was scooted right up against Which the wall. Which I think he would be. <laughs> okay, fair I think he, I think what exactly what happened was he scooted up near the wall 
crime or crime. The, oh wait, um, no, it's a chair. It's not a booth. It's a chair. Oh. I mean, he could get out of the chair and be. <laughs> Well, I really hope look, nobody walks closer and takes a look. No, I think, I think he was hiding under the table. Hid under the table and then, like, ran off. But or, we can see under the table. Or maybe, there. I don't know, maybe he's hiding up against the wall and then they're like, oh my gosh, poisoning. It's behind and the then, scratchy post. And then, <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. And then maybe, like, he hid and then... Um, they, everybody got, n not everybody got knocked out. Everybody just, like, fainted. So maybe during that fainting time, the chef... Did we break his psych lock? Yeah. Never mind. Well, I was thinking maybe the chef, he was like, lottery ticket, and then, like, the guy was like, hi. And then, like, he grabbed one lottery ticket, ran off, and then the guy ran off. Because everyone's an idiot in these games, and nobody calls the police. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> like, everyone. Like, Certainly was... not everyone was an idiot. <laughs> he was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Well, I mean, we're not gonna get penalized, so why not? <laughs> That's true. No, I should leave it alone. Oh wait, it's the same thing every time. Never mind. And what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Please, tell us. Huh? How should I know? Oh. Thanks a lot! We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? Clearly he was listening to Disney Spotify. I thought you were going to say Disney Radio, which would be what it would be. Kids Bop 59. On the radio? <laughs> it's just like, hey now, you're an all-star. Except worse. <laughs> <laughs> so traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid, or was it a powder? If I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Ha! Huh. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? Maybe this guy was weird! Maybe he was... Or maybe... Well, there's sugar on the table, maybe. The so, victim took his coffee black with oh, no sugar. Oh, never mind. Ugh. It seems that the poison could only have been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Give it a shot, why not? Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of the coffee? Oh, yeah. Well, he died. Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim even drank any of it? Oh, hey! You're right! That's what I was thinking! Uh, he's dead. Therefore, he drank it. In case you were wondering, that last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh, hey! You're right! You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. What piece of evidence? The, that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> uh, what piece was it again? He's gonna spit coffee in his face. This! What?! Should I be grateful this coffee's only hot enough to give me first degree burns? What?! <laughs> oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. How yes, beautiful. the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. <laughs> oh, yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Uh... Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this Maybe- cup. hold up! Maybe Maggie- okay, I have another idea. Maggie's super clumsy with everything. <laughs> so maybe she's like, da, da, da! Also, this would totally be in character if this was like a maid cafe where it's just like, Oh no! I'm so sorry! Ugh! I don't like think it's weird. a maid cafe. But anyway, she's in the weird <laughs> outfit. So maybe she like trips, coffee spills a little bit, the, um- the, the old guy's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, like, watching her, and then presents the coffee, and then maybe he didn't drink it. <laughs> that is pretty far-fetched, I it must It is admit. pretty far-fetched, but it's not far-fetched for Maggie. I feel like she would be the person who would, like, spill the The victim food. gulped down the bitter death that was the waitress had brought him. Like this. Ah! Why do you have to chug the coffee like that? Also, he's on cop, what, four? Four. 
For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Oh. Well, but that would make sense, because if anybody added something, they could just be like... Like, I, yeah, that's true. I, I don't know why I was doing this, like, Parmesan cheese grating. <laughs> Let's grate some potassium can I cyanide. Can I have my coffee black, but with Parmesan cheese grating it? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Customer's always right in all that, even though that's not what that means. I don't know why. For, upon Fervent's investigation of the cup, we found a certain chemical substance. Okay. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That puts stuff packs a punch. Cool. Potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? I've heard of that chemical Wait, before. Wait, never mind. Wait, never mind. Exactly how strong is the poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's, well, that stuff's lethal. Eat too much and you're history. How much is too much? Maybe the prosecutor will know. A lethal dose is 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. That's it? Also, um, way to be uh, prejudiced against us Americans who don't use grams. How many cups was it? Was it like a quarter of a teaspoon? That's pretty small though, like yeah, 0. 0.2 grams. That's like you put the salt from your salt shaker on your fries. You open the little McDonald's salt packet and put it on the fries because they don't put enough salt on it. Well, sometimes they do. You never put extra salt on that. Oh no, it's um Wendy's fries. Wendy's fries. You also don't need much salt on those, but... Sometimes you do. I, you know a, a fast food place where sometimes they don't have the time to put the salt on it because they're slammed, yeah, and then you have to blood. open the little salt packet to put on? That's what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yeah, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. Wow. Hmm, such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Like around somebody's neck on a necklace, like the last time we had poison. <laughs> uh, looks like Miss Bird might have had some ate kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of motive. I wonder if that's still in Phoenix's stomach. Like you know the weird X-ray gum from Spybox yeah. One. If like you put if it on I Phoenix right, me, would, would it just wrench. be like there's a weird necklace? In well, we had to stomach. chew it into bits. <laughs> How are you feeling? Not bad. A little down in the mouth. No. <laughs> yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Uh. You know what my golden rule is, detective? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand, if we have to chuck you out. Mm. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then it is... Is it possible that Maggie stole the winning one? Ah, oh, man, what should I do? Well, I mean, we're not gonna get penalized, so... Wait a minute! The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Ha! I have here in my hand... the very ticket in question. Th well... That's the half a million dollar lottery ticket? One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search... of the defendant. Great! Wh what?! Well, here's the deal. She passed out. It could be... Actually, it could be Mr. Armstrong's trying to blame it. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna get the ticket. And he's like, which one? And then just like picks one, puts it in her pocket, picks, picks the, the other. other one. It's the wrong one. Maybe he wanted the real one and then he just accidentally sabotaged her. And he's like, duh, 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 back into the I kitchen. really wish people could see the walk you're doing. <laughs> it's like, picture any miney except fast and like, no, 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 no. Picture the, uh, the carpenters from Ocarina of Time 3D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> duh, 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 duh. And that's what she was doing. Yeah. Order, order! Oh, ha! Time, She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. Y you will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. Huh, I'd better keep an eye on that ticket. The way in the judge, the way the judge's voice is quivering. <laughs> Victim's lottery ticket, evidence of court record. Cool. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial too, but it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? Payne didn't say how much it was worth. He's just like, she stole a lottery ticket. Okay, that's a perfect reason for murder. <laughs> it's just a scrap of paper. 
What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. I bet he wants to say it was found on Maggie's person. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which he is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this oh, crime. Oh, are we not supposed to press that much? Ah, uh, it's fine. <laughs> I feel like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very, very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, I, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind an old man who's weak to the siren call of money. No good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. What? He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. The, that stain looks like... It can't be... What, can it? It looks like coffee, ha. and it looks like paint. <laughs> orange. It looks like... orange. Ha! It seems the star of our play was a little flustered. What? And somehow spilled coffee on herself. Yeah, it's coffee. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The... the pocket? <laughs> a search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide, the very poison used by the killer, was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. Well... WHAT?! Here's the deal, probably... Miss Phoenix Wright whatever, or the chef was like, oh, I've got gloves on. I'll just, like, put this in her pocket, but first... <laughs> just, like, stabbing... By, by Phoenix Wright, do you mean Zinniope? Yeah, Zinniope. Just, like, taking it and pushing it on her fingers, and then, like, okay, fingerprints. <laughs> sticks yeah. it down the pocket. Order, order, order! The court will accept these items into evidence. Apron added to the court record. Potassium cyanide added to the court record. <sighs> There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? It's not important. <laughs> blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor! The blood's covered stain that's smeared all over the apron! That's ridiculous! No one told me anything about a blood stain! You don't need to be told! Just look <laughs> at it! <laughs> well, detective, could this stain really be blood? No way, sir! That's. It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking someone their breakfast that day. Who eats ketchup with breakfast? Eggs. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, no. <laughs> I'm thinking like waffles. <laughs> <laughs> they put ketchup on all their food. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, you would put ketchup on You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Oh my God. Pull a stun like that again and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. Ugh. I thought everyone knew that it was what it was already. I... Uh, okay. Hmm, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt yeah, the last so actually, verdict I ruled on the case. So actually, my idea from before would make sense if she's like, Oh, it spills like... <laughs> Ketchup and coffee. All over. Oh, you know that, that's like the the maid from uh, Two Bad Mice where she falls down the stairs. Ah! I forgot about that. She like completely falls down the stairs. Destroys like everything. Like almost as bad as when the beast falls down the stairs with the bird. <laughs> We're not talking about that again. <laughs>